Hi everybody, a very good afternoon to you all. We welcome you all to today's webinar organized by Gem Atlas on the analysis and detection of the lab grown diamonds. We are very thankful to Mr. Abhilash for taking this webinar for us today. Now I hand over the presentation to Mr. Abhilash to take it forward from here. Thank you, Mr. Rafni, uh, for the introduction. Thank you, friends. And uh, I would like to share some of my information, what I have gathered uh, to you. Uh, this is about the detection of lab-grown diamonds. Let us know what about a little bit about the jewelry industry, as we all know about it. The gem and jewelry industry occupies an important position in the Indian economy. It is the leading foreign exchange earner as well as one of the fastest growing industry in the country. The two major segments of the sector in India are gold jewelry and diamonds. Gold jewelry forms around 80% of Indian jewelry market with the balance studded jewelry that includes diamonds and gemstone studded jewelry. Besides, India is the world largest cutting and polishing industry for diamond. If I am not mistaken, out of 10 diamonds in the world, 8 are cut and polished in India. The major portion of the rough, uncut diamond processed in India is exported, either in the form of polished diamonds or finished diamond jewelry. Currently, the authenticity of the diamond is an important aspect in the industry to maintain the trust globally. Identification of gems and jewelry. The government and council has taken many initiatives to protect the industry. There are many institutes who can help us to uh, help us the restore and gain the trust in the customer globally and within the industry, which are in support of council as well as individual companies. The Gem and Jewelry Council in India's certification authority, the government, central board and excise and custom has banned the import or export of rough diamond shipment which are not accompanied by the Kimberley process certificate. The certification of quality diamond and jewelry has boosted export has, and has resulted a greater acceptance of Indian product in the world market. Requirement of the industry. Today the major threat in the mix is mixing of lab grown diamonds with natural diamonds. The diamond trading manufacturing, the trading company, the crucial part is to identify and separate the lab grown diamond from the natural diamond. The minimum size of the diamond to be scanned is of 0.7 mm. Or we can say the seam side would be somewhere around minus four zeros. The goods are in a bulk quantity. The, in precious and semi-precious, we, here we need to check the origin of the stone as well as the separation from natural and from natural treated. The jewelry manufacturing and the showroom industry. After the jewelry is ready, it is required to check the authenticity of the stone. At the showroom, it is important to check the authenticity of the stone before buyback or to sell the jewelry. Let's talk about a little uh, furniture itself from a detail which we have already said in the last uh, webinar that is about natural and lab grown diamond. 
this will help us to understand the device and the machinery in the market a little better. As we all know friends that diamonds, be it a natural diamond or lab grown diamond, diamonds are being categorized into two types which we normally call as type 1 and type 2. Type 1 contains the nitrogen as an impurity but this impurity helps us to detect the diamond, the natural diamond from the lab grown diamonds. Type 2 does not have nitrogen or we can say a very nominal portion of nitrogen is present in the diamond. Type 1 is further characterized into type 1A and 1B depending upon the type of bond water. The nitrogen atoms are present as the pair of small groups called as aggregated. Whereas in type 1B, the nitrogen atoms are present as isolated atoms. In type 2A, there, there is a pure form of diamonds, there is no nitrogen available in the stones or if it is available, it would be between 0 to 9 ppm. Type 2B which has been characterized, if there is a boron present in the diamond and no nitrogen in it, then we can put into the category of type 2B. Hi, sorry to interrupt uh, the team. Just wanted to inform you that in case if you have any questions during the seminar, during this webinar, you can post it on the right hand side panel, the questions panel, and we would be happy to answer them at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Here, this diagram shows us in a little detail what we are talking about type 1, type 1A, one type 1AB type 2, type 2A, type 2B. In type 1A, if you see the diagram, you will see N nodes as a nitrogen bonds, which is very closely bonded with each other, be it type 1A, 1AB or 1A and 3. Here the nitrogen bonds are close to each other. Whereas in 1B, if you see at the topmost part, one nitrogen atom has been isolated. That is the reason we put this diamond into 1B categorized. Talking about type 2, in type 2A you do not see the nitrogen bond at all. We call this as a pure form of diamond. Type 2B which contains boron. These two types I would like to add a little bit here. These two types of diamond type 2A and 2B, the natural diamonds are also been treated to change the color. For example, if your diamonds are of LB color or brown color and if it does not contain any nitrogen in it, you can treat under HPHT that is high pressure, high temperature and change the color into colorless. It may even go to D color. If your diamond contains boron in it, then the color would come out to a blue color, a light blue color or little shaded blue color. Now we talk about the content, the volume of content in natural diamond. The 98% of the natural diamond, what we receive from the mines are of type 1A and hardly 0.1% is of uh, 1B that is of 98.1 you can say. Type 2A is almost only 2% or you can say 1.8% of type 2A and 1.1% of type 2B. We, form, we find this natural diamonds in the mines. This, this photograph is, uh, shows you the different types of diamonds. For example, on the left hand side what you see 
are the natural rough diamonds which are been mined. On the above photograph you see yellow color diamonds are grown in HPHT that is high pressure high temperature. Third photograph shows the square diamond. Basically, this are been processed diamond. With uh, we call it as a CVD. The full form of CVD is carbon vapor deposition, where a layer by layer is been deposited on the diamonds. These are some basic things in the industry available at a very low price. Basically, this machine detects whether your diamond contains nitrogen or has very low nitrogen. The theory on this which works is if there is a diamond, the certain part type of light is been, uh, the diamond is been exposed to certain types of light. If there is a nitrogen presence in the di diamond, the light would be absorbed by the light and it won't be refracted back or you can say no, not been transmitted. But if there is no nitrogen in the diamond, it will reflect back and show you as a different type of diamond. On the right hand side of the photograph, the below white color machine is easily available at the stores and all, which detects. But here the problem would be, even if there is a low nitrogen, it will show you as either CVD or treated diamond. I would like to add one point in this slide. Uh, as I was telling you about different types of diamond, type 2A diamond mostly are found in LB color or brown color. There is very rare and rarest diamonds which comes under white color type 2A. You can say 0.01% of 2% of the type 2A. So when we get a white diamond that is a colorless diamond which shows at a type 2A, it is required further testing. This could be either treated or lab grown. Photoluminous scanner. These are a little sophisticated than earlier device and also detects the color pattern generated by diamond. For example, now let, I would like to add a point here. The HPHT diamond or the CVD diamonds has a tendency to glow like a radium if it has been exposed to certain types of light, even in the dark. So what happens, this machine throws the, expose the diamonds into certain types of light. After certain time, when the machine, the light has been switched off in the dark chamber also, this diamond glows, which helps out to identify the diamonds. You will be able to see this in my next slide. On the left hand side of the slide, if you see there are certain natural diamonds or so, I'm sorry, some rough diamonds are being ex uh, kept in the tray, which are being later exposed to that particular type of frequency of the light. In the dark chamber, you will see the color, the uh, natural diamonds does not glow. At the same time, HPHT diamond or HPHT grown diamond glows in the dark. This helps you out to identify whether your diamonds are natural or HPHT. The only problem here is there are certain natural diamonds as well which would grow uh, glow under the dark light. So we can have to say that this process also after being identified as uh, doubtful stones, this need to be further checked in further technologies. This is also one of the very good machines, what we call it as Diamond View. If I'm not mistaken, it was been introduced by DTC. Here, this machine also indicates the pattern of growing. If you see on the left hand side of the images of CVD grown diamonds, you can see certain lines. 
this line indicates the pattern of growing of the diamonds. Of course, this machine is a bit expensive, can be used only in the trade. This machine, as we have seen the HP HPL photoluminous or phosphorus, in the other word which is also called as phosphorus machines. These machines have been further modified for the industrial purpose as multi-stone shorter. This is a very convenient machine for the industry or the trade person. These are these machines. If you put the whole lot of a diamond in it, it will segregate by itself and separate it whether the diamonds are natural, non-diamonds, or you can say refer that would be HPST or CVD as a refer to further test diamonds. This helps out to do the job much faster than the regular machines. This are also been introduced by DTC. Now we need to understand a little bit of a technical part that is this machine which we know this technology is known as FTIR. The full form of is Fourier transform infrared. Uh, this was the formula was been invented by a Fourier a name scientist named Fourier. After his name, it has been named as an FTIR. IR represents infrared. Basically, this machine helps you out to find the internal structure of the diamond, or we can say the content of the diamond. That helps you out to understand more about diamonds than just the physical structure or illumination. On the left hand side, you see a small graph, which we call it as a spectrum. In the spectrum, you see a center peak, which is between 1500 to 2500. This peak resembles or identifies as a carbon peak. The first of all, this machine identifies that whether your product or sample is a diamond or not. Whenever you receive this particular P, it will identify as a diamond. The next step it will identify whether it contains nitrogen or not. On the left hand on the right hand side of the peak, if you say a long peak which is between 1000 to 1500, this peak denominates the nitrogen. Whenever you see this peak, this peak resembles and tells you whether the diamond sits in type 1 or type 2. Whenever you get this peak, the diamond has been categorized as a diamond type 1A or 1B. On the left hand side of the spectrum, since we do not have it here, but between you can say 2500 to 3500, there comes a two different peak for boron as well as hydrogen. Hydrogen presently as far as I know does not play much role in this but boron represent uh, uh, results. If the diamond has been treated it results for the colors. Whenever you see a blue tint in the diamond or after treated the blue tint in the diamond that is because of the boron in the diamond. If you do not see the peak, the right peak, which is between 1000 to 1500, the diamond has been characterized as type 2A. It does not contain diamond. The only problem with this technology is it can only tell you the type of the diamond. It cannot help you out to further study. For example, there are natural diamonds which uh, are into type 2A. The lab grown diamonds also sits into type 2A. So this will type to tell you the more further detail whether your diamonds are type 1A or type 2A. But this machine is also widely in use in our industry. Of course, first to detect the type of the stone, another 
to find out whether this diamond can be further treated and change the color of the diamond. This technology, what we call it, is the Raman spectrometer. The Raman spectrometer, which is definitely after named after scientist Dr. C. V. Raman, who had invented a formula long back, and today it has been useful to us. You see different kinds of machines in this thing. Basically, Raman spectrometer works with the laser. What you saw in FDIL, which works on infrared. The same uh, this is way this machine works with the help of a laser. This is the atomic structure to identify a little bit to understand more about them. On the left hand side you see a graphite bonds, how it has been bonded. Next to it, if you see the diamond bonds are very strongly bond with each other. Compared to the right one, what you see, which is of CVD diamonds. And how it has been bonded with each other once it has been formed. This, this machine, what we call it as a mini Raman spectrometer. company in a Hong Kong show as it prepares for the launch of groundbreaking mini Raman spectrometer in the Hong Kong jewelry show. This is the desktop size device which has been designed specifically, specifically for the non-technical person, personally for the diamond industry to check whether your diamonds are HPHT, CVD grown or natural diamond. The diamond as well as simulated diamonds. It can also detect whether your diamonds are natural but treated diamonds. At its standard of its price, the, uh, the actually what we see in the Raman spectrometer, it's very expensive technology. But this company had tried, tried to bring down the cost so it would be more accessible for the other industry as well. This is Gemino Raman 532 uh, Raman spectrometer. This helps you out to detect the natural diamond, uh, uh, loose diamond, as well as jewelry studded also. The details of the machines are... This machine is being equipped with the Raman spectrometer as well as photoluminous spectrometer for gemological testing and analyze. Of course, the non-destructive tool is fast, reliable, and surprisingly very easy to use. The gem under study is laid table down to the sample state. The optical system of the Raman Pro is automatically in the focus of sample surface. If you know how to use the reflectometer, you can easily use German, uh, German Gemo Raman. This is another model of Gemino Raman, more scientific and uh, gra uh, scientific graded Raman spectrometer. This is more defined to the diamond industry. It is extended sp spiral range of specific so specifically tailored for diamond industry studies and allow the clear detection of important significance of possible synthetic origin and irradiated uh, treated. Has gained a popularity and among the diamond laboratories, many of the laboratories are using these machines for the further detection of the stone. Bravio handheld Raman spectrometer. This machine has been introduced by Bruker company from Germany. Basically, this machine is widely used in 
pharmaceutical uh, industry as well as any other industry as well. This machine has got a higher range of laser wavelength, somewhere around 1200 uh, hertz, and it helps you out to identify the smooths better than any other machines. Jam checker. This is recently been launched in a company uh, which is still under prototype. But the company has a very good uh, claim. What they have claimed are some interesting facts about the machine. It tells you whether your diamond, first the process of this machine goes, it detects whether your sample is diamond or not a diamond. Then second portion will tell you the diamond is synthetic or natural diamond. If it is synthetic, then it will tell you whether the diamond is CVD or HVHD. Or if it is, if it is a natural diamond, it will tell you whether it has been HVHD treated or radiation treated. Or if it is a CVD, it will treat, uh, check and scan and tell you whether it has been CVD is being further treated with HVHD or radiation. So whatever the form of diamond it would be, it can check and let you know the exact result of this. The machine can check the till date, it can say checks around 0 0.02, that is a 0 0.2 cent stones in the machine. It has already inbuilt photoluminous chamber, enabled low back scanning also. You can scan, you can check the stones inside the machine itself with the photoluminous. It has got a battery chargeable power adapter, easy to transport. Uh, the program software algorithm and can be upgraded for the market technology. What the best part of the machine is, it also tells you how if there is something new type of the stone has been introduced in the market. The first of all, as I told you, this machine will check whether your stone is diamonds or non-diamond. If it is diamond, it is CVD or HPHT. If it is CVD, do you have the, the type of spectrum in the library? If it does not match the current spectrum in your library, immediately it will detect and tell you this is something new in the market where you need further studies. This machine also it helps you out to look at the spectrum or the graph of the stone to identify it further. Thank you very much, friends. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm there. The how effect the first question what we have it here is how effectively the CVDs can be detected. Uh, this uh, question has been raised by Mr. Bravin Kamdar. As the CVD manufacturing technique is getting upgraded every day, do the detection technology can be guaranteed and identified 100%? I agree with you Mr. Bravin that the technology of the CVD is growing much faster than what other detection or any other industry is going. What we see it today, we may see something else, the different type of samples tomorrow. But I am also happy to inform you that there are certain companies who has made some technologies which we will in further testing, which helps you out to identify 
whether the diamonds are natural or lab grown. Of course, it's a bit more technical and more scientific, but as far as I feel it, it there's any stone which can be made uh, can be detected. Uh, Mr. Manny has got a question. Are any of the diamonds better than any other types? Or example, is type 2 the best sparkless? Sparkless has nothing to do with the type of the diamond. Basically, the type is being generated from the content of nitrogen. Till date, for the scientific reason, nitrogen was considered as an impurity. But today, I would say, Nitrogen is helping us out to detect or segregate the natural diamond from the lab grown diamond. I am not sure tomorrow you might even come down with the CVDs or HPHT diamond which are been aggregated with the nitrogen. And we are with such types of diamonds where we can test it further. But as we are talking about sparkles, no. That sparkle has nothing to do with the types of the diamond. That is purely how the diamond has been cut and polished. Thank you. Mr. Manish has asked me, by passing the uh, technical aspect of the diamond, please inform various machines available in the market and their reliability of detection. CVD and natural diamond already set in the jewelry. As I told you, Mr. Manish, actually, I would like to tell you one thing about today about CVD and uh, lab grown diamond. The reason the technique, technology or technical detection has gone more technical the, is it is like you are uh, identifying a lab. Test you baby and a natural baby. Baby once has been grown, you don't know the baby was born a test you baby or natural baby. Here, or in a other word, if I want to say, we have to test the DNA of the stone to find out whether the diamonds are natural or lab grown. So, if I say one particular machine which helps me out to do my job, I'm sorry as far as I know, not a single one machine can help you out. You need to have various tests, various type of machine to identify. The basic machine what we, I showed you, those are photoluminous, which helps you out to at least at the first stage itself to find out whether your stones are doubtful or not. As I told you, the natural diamonds are been separated from glowing the diamonds. Only a few percent of the natural diamonds would glow in the dark like uh, in a photoluminous as I saw. So at the first stage, yes, the photoluminous technology might help you out at the first stage to identify whether you have a problematic diamond or not. Mr. Darshan Shah has asked, what are the benefits of buying HPST diamond? So this I would not be able to answer more better now because we are more talking on technical rather than marketing aspect. This is completely an individual choice whether the person needs to buy a natural diamond or HPST grow diamond or CBD. Of course there is a difference in the price but I would suggest you, you check it with your source for the pricing. Thank you. Mr. Manish has asked, sir, any machine which can detect stones when a CVD and natural after has been set in jewelry? Yes, there are machines. As I have shown you, all these three technologies, whether it is photoluminous, FTIR, or Raman spectrometer, all these machines can detect whether your diamonds are natural or lab grown, be it a loose diamond or studded. It's only a different type of fixture which helps you out to scan the diamonds. If there is 
send me, I'll, uh, Mr. Manish, I will try to mail you the details of the machine. Uh, Mr. Vishal has also got the same question that which machines are available. All this machine, as I say, photoluminous. There are many machines, Gen Secure, Q++, GII is also launched for the photoluminous. They have got to check whether your diamonds in the uh, jewelry also you can check it. And there are certain uh, Raman spectrometer also which can uh, detect. I'll try to send you the details of the same. Thank you. Uh, Simulant Diamonds and uh, uh, Vijaya Pawar has asked me what is the difference between synthetic diamond and stimulant diamonds. If I'm not mistaken, if you are talking about stimulant means treated. Treated means if you are asking the treated, the synthetic is grown in a laboratory. And treated uh, stimulant means the natural diamond which has been processed under some process and change the color of the diamond. The HPHT, uh, Mr. Darshan has asked us that till what size can HPHT be done? The HPHT if we are talking about growing the diamonds, the diamonds are being grown from 1 mm to, as far as I know, up to 5 mm in HPHD. And if you are talking about HPHD treatment, then it has uh, 10 pointers and above are being used for the treatment. Uh, uh, Mr. Sarla Shah has asked, uh, which, uh, is there any technology available which helps you to separate the lab-grown synthetic from the parcel? Yes, uh, the first machine what we have shown it, or you can say the DTC machines or the first machine photoluminous technologies uh, helps you out at the first stage to separate the diamond, the synthetic or lab-grown diamond from the natural diamond. At a very high state. This, the segregated diamond would go into a refer to further test rather than confirm that those are HPHT. As I told you earlier, one process is not enough to check whether your diamonds are natural or lab grown. Uh, which machine, uh, Mrs. Vijay Pawar has asked, which machine can help us identify the above type of the diamonds. If you are looking to identify the only type of the diamond, FTIL technology is the best to find out whether your diamond is of 1A, AB, B or type 2A or 2B. That would be the best technology. Uh, Mr. Sanjay has asked me, the accuracy of a gemologist technique. Uh, I wouldn't comment on individual machines. I would rather speak about the technology. The individual machine has its own capacity, whether how accurate the machine. I can tell you more about what technology the machine has it, and you can judge on that. Thank you. Mr. Joan. Uh, Mr. Umesh has asked, the challenge is quick, clear, identify, identification after production of jewelry on shop floor with normal means available in the manufacturing jewelry. What range and price? Uh, this machine, as I told you, uh, the photoluminous is that the first chance it will help you out to settle the natural diamond from the referred or doubtful diamonds. These machines are used in many of the companies on the shop floor to identify the diamonds. What machine, what is the price range of the machine available currently in the market? There are different, uh, Mr. Babin has asked this and I would say you would rather go to the company's individual because 
uh, it would be difficult for me to tell you. But I can tell you, the Raman spectrometer technology is a bit expensive than the photolum photoluminous technology is much cheaper than the Raman spectrometer. Uh, uh, Raman spectrometer. The Raman spectrometer might range between twenty thousand to thirty or forty thousand dollars. I'm talking about forty thousand dollars. Oh, in general, left Chandni has asked the question: Where can I buy the? Answer them for the benefit of all. Uh, Mr. Harsh has asked me where can I buy the Raman spectrometer. There are many companies who are dealing in it. If you want, I can send you the details of the thing. Please mail me the details, Mr. Mr. Prakash has asked me, can you share some more details, information about how the Raman spectrometer is used in identification? of lab group. In short, if I would like to tell you Mr. Prakash that this uh, technology, a Raman spectrometer, basically identifies the atomic structure of the sample. From that it identifies whether your diamonds or sample is a diamond or non-diamond. If it is diamond, if it is uh, lab grown diamond, CBD, HPST or natural diamond. Because as far as I know, all the atomic structure differs a little bit, which helps you out to identify it. Mr. Bhavesh Shah has asked, what is the total cost of our investment of setting up an HPHT process lab? Uh, well, it would be difficult to tell me because as I told you, the machine range from different price range. There are certain machines which also cost from 30,000 and there are Raman spectrometer which cost $160,000. So it entirely depends on you or individual how you want to set up the labs and what is the same. Uh, from where can we see the demo of the Bravo handheld? Mr. Yogesh Desha has asked. Well, you mail me the detail, I'll forward you the company's detail as well from where you can and the contact person. I need to talk to them and find out the details then. I can mail you the details of the same. The Bravio handheld, I can tell you, is made by broker. Mr. John, hi, could you please list the different types of these machines? Uh, Mr. John, you have asked me, hi, could you please list the different types of machines? As I told you in my presentation, photoluminous, FTR and Raman spectrometers are the different technologies available. There are many vendors who are selling it in different categories. For example, photoluminous technology, if I am not mistaken, there are around 8 to 10 vendors as far as I know in India who are selling it. Raman spectrometers are many customers, so there are many people, if you go into the Google also, they will help you out to find out which are this company who are selling it. Thank you Mr. Manish for your other thing and I will try to mail you the details as soon as possible. So does any machine analyze the light and performance of the diamond? Well, uh, Sarla, this technology today, what we were discussing was about natural diamonds and lab grow diamonds and their detection. Of course, there are certain machines available for the luminous, uh, for the performance, uh, you can say, but that is completely a different topic altogether. Here, I can tell you more about HPST detection and CVD detection diamonds. We, uh, we use this diamond grading prior to diamond come to production. Uh, yes, Mr. Chawan says, uh, uh, does any machine uh, like, sorry, there are two questions. Next. So we use this in machine grading prior to diamond come to a production. As I told you, Mr. Umesh, uh, the photoluminous technology helps you out to identify the doubtful stones, which you can further check it on Raman spectrometer and FTIR. How can we identify CVD and HPHT? Mr. Apurva, as I told you earlier in my presentation, there are 
a list of technologies if you go to the website and the presentation you can see the, uh, the different stage of identifying whether your diamond okay sorry i confuse your question cvd and hbst yes uh, well therefore to identify whether your diamond are cvd or hbst mr purva then you need a raman spectrometer to identify it the only machine as far as this is the only machine what we have it in the market where we can identify whether your diamonds are HPST or CVD. Please send us the detail to buying of the best of the machine. Thank you. Mr. Manny, I'll try to send you as much detail as I could. Thank you. Any lab is using uh, this machines. Well, these are the technologies are being used by the lab, Mr. Purva. The Raman spectrometers have been used by many of the lab. If I'm not mistaken, almost all the labs are using Raman spectrometers. Whoever is certifying whether your diamonds are lab grown or natural. Question: Till what size can an HPST done? Do you mean to say the growing of the diamond, or uh, uh, the, till what size can an HPST be done? HPST, are you asking me the process? To change the color of the diamond or to grow the diamond? Looks like Please specify. Looks like a production. But it's okay. Whatever I can. There's no more questions. Uh, uh, is there any technology available which helps to separate lab grown? Synthetic from the parcel. Well, I told you uh, earlier that the photon technology helps you to separate the doubtful diamonds, which you further take it for the spectrum or FDI. The technology where you can there are any doubt I got a message. I would like to repeat the last question. The last question would be, is there any technology available to help to separate lab-grown synthetic from the parcel? As I told you earlier, photoluminous technology helps you out to do the mass uh, collection. You can check the parcel with the help of photoluminous technology. This helps you out to separate the natural stones from a doubtful. This doubtful stone, you further give it to the lab or you can check it on a Raman spectrometer to find out whether those are HPST or natural diamonds. Any few more questions, please let me know. If the diamond studded jewelry is put on machine for testing the it is harm the design of the jewelry. No, uh, we have a question here. We have a question here. If a diamond studded jewelry is put in the machine uh, for tasting the diamonds. Uh, Juti, I would like to tell you, your diamonds cannot be harmed or anything because this is not destructive technology. The laser, yes, we say that it has been detected with the laser, but the frequency or the wavelength of the laser is so low, it does not affect, it is only being used for the detection rather than doing any other job. How we differ HP, HPST and CVD? Basically, Mr. Apurva, uh, you have asked me how we differ HPST and CVD. HPST, these are two different processes where the diamond are being grown. The HPST process, or we call it as a high pressure, high temperature process, and CVD, we call it as a uh, carbon vapor deposition. HPST process is a carbon of another 
mixture of element has been exposed, uh, been processed under very high temperature and pressure, which bonds and helps the diamond to grow. Whereas in CBD, we say it is more like a microwave technology where a plasma is generated in a temperature uh, in a chamber and a layer by layer of a diamond is being formed on the seed. In both this technology, we require a seed as a diamond. A diamond seed where on the with the help of it where the diamond is being grown. Do you have any more questions or should I end it? Thank you very much friends and looking forward for your response in this. If you have any question, yes, Mr. Bhavesh has asked me who is the HPST diamond supplier and manufacturer in India? Mr. Bhavesh, I think uh, I won't be able to answer you this question that is on this webinar. But there are many companies who are officially dealing in HPST probe diamonds as well as three diamonds. Mr. Johnny has also got, how do you feel about natural diamond value and demand? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Johnny, I would say natural diamond has its own uh, value or you say its own, uh, this thing, no matter what the synthetic or HPST grown diamond, since the diamond is a product, is a luxury product. And when we are talking about luxury product, the natural has its own value than a synthetic. So I think that will answer my question, your question. I think that's all the questions we have uh, for today. Uh, thank you very much everybody for being such an active participants for the presentation today. On behalf of Gem Atlas, I would like to thank Mr. Abhilash for having this very informative webinar for us today. Thank you very much, sir. And I'm looking forward for many much uh, webinars going ahead. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Good to end the session. Thank you very much, friends. Thank you very much.